He's the author of three books, The End of Illness, which I'm sure many of you have read, A Short Guide to a Long Life, and the book that just came out that we're going to be discussing tonight, The Lucky Years. But the thing I find the most exciting that pops off the pages in his books and that I experience the more I get to know him is that you are infectiously curious. And that curiosity, bundled together with your inherent optimism, makes it a joy to be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. David Agus. Thank you, Heather. Okay, so lots to talk about tonight, and let's get right into it. I'm ready. I think, whether we're 20 or 70 or 80, the one question that everybody would answer that they want the, the question that people would answer yes to would be, would you like to live longer, healthier, and enjoy life more? Everybody wants to live longer. Everybody wants to live healthier, richer lives. Agreed. How do we do that? It's a, you know, you have to break it down by decade. You know, when you talk to a 20-year-old and say, I want you to do this, this, and this, that's going to help you when you're 60 and 70, their eyes glaze over. Right? They, can't, they can't focus on something that will help them decades down the road. You talk to a 70-year-old whose best friend just died of a disease, they will change things on the spot. So that's number one. Number two is, you know, I'm a believer and an optimist. The lucky years really is about what's happening now, these staggering new developments. And the way we all benefit from them is prevention. It is much easier to prevent something than to treat it. And so the whole tenets of prevention make sense. And what we know is the earlier you intervene, the better it is. You have to look through evolution. We evolved over a million years to do certain things. You know, I had this interview yesterday, and they said, what do you think about um, uh, uh, the Apple Watch? What do you think about self-driving cars? I go, are you serious? It is the worst thing ever for our brain. Our brains evolved, so who could go hunting and make a kill in the wild and then find their way back to the village survived? So it loves physical activity with pattern recognition, which is what driving is. Mm -hmm. So if you had too much to drink or you're stuck in traffic, which, by the way, this city, all of a sudden, you could barely move. If you're stuck in traffic, it's great. But most of the time, our brain loves that. Right. And we want to do that. So, you know, if I take my watch and put it from my left hand to my right hand, and I walk, I'm actually stimulating cross currents in my brain, which is a good thing. And that's what you want to do, not take the easy way out. Let's say you're 50, and we'll go backwards. I think it's a good idea to go backwards. You're 50, and you want to do 50 or more, and you want to do five things that would enhance your, your life and make it more likely that you will live the longest possible. But you're already 50. What Got would it. you do? So number one, and these will sound simple, but there's a lot of science behind them. One of the ones, I mean, the key one is movement over time. So our bodies were designed to move. Our right. lymphatics that control our immune system have no muscle in their wall. It's the rhythmic contractions of the muscles in your legs when you walk that actually make our body work. So design your life or redesign it to move. Don't sit all day at the office. Get up every hour, walk around, et cetera. Relatively simple thing, but you add an hour extra walking a week, you will live 1.7 years longer. So move, that's move. number one. Yes. Number two, what can I do? So number two is know yourself. Okay. And again, that seems like a relatively simple tenet, but now you're 50 years old, you go to your doctor and he or she at two o'clock says, hey, your blood pressure is you know, 110 over 70, it's normal. Well, nobody ever checked it when you got up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, when you're pissed off after a phone call. With enough data, error goes away. In today's era, it's not anymore going to go to the doctor and they collect your blood and your data. You collect your data at home and bring it in. In this new book, there's a two-week challenge where I want you to look at yourself and really take that challenge to know yourself so the discussion you have with your doctor can be meaningful. Okay, number three. All right, number three is one that people give me pushback on, but it's real, is that there's a pill a day you can take that will reduce not the incidence, but the death rate of cancer by 30%, heart disease by 22%, and stroke by 17%. This pill is 2,400 years old, because Hippocrates said you take the bark of the willow tree and chew it and pain and fever go away. It's called a baby aspirin. So something as staggering and as simple as that, that costs $3 for 365 pills, has a remarkable impact on health. The data are age 40 and above. Right. There are side effects to it. It increases bleeding time slightly and can upset the stomach, but the benefits are dramatic. Okay, while we're on things we can take ourselves, and I'm keeping this as number three because I know you have uh -huh. more, so these are all the things we can take in pill or capsule format. What is your view, because I know you have one, 
on supplements. Avoid them. So, you know, the human body was designed by somebody somewhere to absorb things from food. So when you take too much of something in one pill, which is what vitamins and supplements are, bad things happen. So there's yet to be a positive study in the history of man or womankind ever showing a benefit to vitamins or supplements. Yet people do it all the time. So eat real food. And it's that could be number four, eat real food. Eat real food. And it's not just what you eat, it's when you eat. That's ah, critical. What about when? So people who graze, that is grab a snack whenever they were hungry, even if it's little ones, a stick of celery, et cetera, have 81% more diabetes on a weight-adjusted basis. So what happens is, is that when you eat, your insulin goes up. And so your body says, hey, Heather, I don't know what I'm gonna eat, so I'm just gonna keep my insulin up. Diabetes type two, the common one, is insulin resistance. When it's up all the time, the body just doesn't care about it anymore. So in between meals, zero food. No snacks, no grabbing a pretzel or whatever. So those Silicon Valley companies that keep food out all the time for their employees, it is the worst thing they could be doing for their employees. So we're gonna eat real food yes. and eat maybe three meals a day and nothing in between so the insulin doesn't go up. Nothing in between so the insulin doesn't go up, yes. Okay, five, I want okay. one more thing. So five is, I, I wanna talk about the brain. So it's really one of the messages is in number five is protect this. And so what that also means is do what's uncomfortable. Every year you delay retirement, you reduce the incidence of Alzheimer's by 3%. So you retired 85 instead of 65, that's a 60% reduction right there. So stimulate yourself, rearrange the furniture in your bedroom every couple months. Really make your brain work differently. Don't get it in a row. Don't ever drive the same route home mm -hmm. from work every day. Mm -hmm. Drive a different room every time to kind of stimulate this. Learn a foreign language. Pick up a new hobby if you're not working in your job. Retirement doesn't necessarily mean you're not in your old job. It just means this isn't functioning like it did before. Well, it is a privilege to have you here. Honestly, it was just, I was thrilled you, when Heather. you said you would come up to talk with us. It is joyful to have this discussion. Well, when Heather yeah. asks, you say yes. Is the... <laughs> uh, no, really, we, we, we thank you because this is just the beginning of, I know what will be a longer journey for everybody else. Thanks, everyone, for coming up. If you'd like uh, Dr. Agus to sign your book, I'm sure he will do it. Be healthy.